Hi friends, Grace here. I hope you're all well and you had a lovely week. Right now it's very cold here in Switzerland. We've had lots of snow in the minus range and stuff like that. It looks very beautiful but very cold. Like during this time of year I like to just travel somewhere hot. I think maybe I'll go to Dubai. My sister's in Dubai. Maybe I'll go there for a couple of weeks, get some sun or... I used to go to America a lot once a year. I know some people have been inviting me over, but um, if you're not, you know, if you, don't, if you don't have the thing, you can't travel there. So they still have some strict rules, but um, in other countries like Dubai, Thailand, they've opened it up now. So I'll see if I can go there for a few weeks to get some sun. Anyway. Welcome to another video. We'll be continuing on with what we have been discussing last week on diet and the health reform. But first and foremost, I want to thank you all, most of you all, for some of the comments you left on my last video. Initially, I thought I'd get a lot of hate because I know this topic is a very sensitive topic. But a lot of you were very understanding. And even if you disagreed, you voiced your concerns in a respectful manner. So I really appreciate that. So thank you so much for that. But um, there are some points that I want to address from some of the comments that came from this video. And it's a common understanding many Seven Day Adventists have. Even I had this understanding at one point. And that is that as a Seven Adventist, if you are still eating meat, then you are going to hell basically. Many Seven Adventists believe that. That if you are still eating meat as a Seven Adventist, you're gonna go to hell because, um, we are supposed to be returning back to the diet God gave to Adam and Eve. And that is, you know, fruits, nuts and grains and so on. And some believe that if you're not following the counsels from Ellen White, because many believe that's what she also believed as well, that if we, that we are to just completely do, everyone is supposed to do away with meat eating at this time. And those who do eat meat for whatever reason, they are sort of looked down upon. I used to, I used to think this, I'm not even going to lie, early on in my experience, you know, like that's how I was taught that, you know, we have to be, we have to go plant-based and, you know, and stuff like that. But I want to say that that is a very wrong understanding. It's almost satanic. I'll explain why in a moment. Very dangerous as well. And um, I really want to address this in this video. Now, first and foremost, as Seven Adventists, most Seven Adventists, in fact, I believe all Seven Adventists would say that our doctrine, every doctrine we hold, we should be able to prove from the Bible that the spirit of prophecy or Ellen White, she didn't come to bring no new doctrine, but to point us back to the Bible. We would, I think everyone would pretty much agree with that. Though if we were to read the Bible from cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation, we know that God did give permission for man to eat meats, animal products, certain meats, which he um, explained to us in Leviticus, clean meats. And there's some meats like pork we should absolutely stay away from. And after God gave us this command that allowed us to eat meat after the flood, Nowhere in scripture do we find anything that tells us that we are to stop eating meat um, before Christ comes, that God will have a, a, um, a group of people or the 144,000 that would strictly be vegan. The Bible doesn't teach that. We would, I think we would all agree that the Bible doesn't teach that we need to stop eating meat and be vegan before Christ comes. And if we are to read the Bible, after God gave permission for man to eat meat, we can see that it's presented, meat eating is not presented as sin. It's presented in the positive light. I mean, the disciples ate fish. Um, the high priest, they had to eat the lamb. When the Jesus ate, wasn't a vegan, he ate fish. Even before he translated to heaven, we know that he ate fish. So the idea that before one translates, they have to be vegan. I mean, you can't get that from the Bible because before Christ translated, he ate fish. I mean, God fed Elijah flesh using the birds, you know. So when we read the Bible, you can see that 
after he gave the command for us to eat meat is not presented in a negative light. Now I raised this briefly in my last video and then someone was saying, oh, she's just using, she's now using arguments from non seminary Adventists or other denominations. But so what if I am, if they're true arguments? I mean, this argument is not false. They are right, you know? And as some events, we can be so arrogant and proud thinking that only we have this particular knowledge and no one else can teach us anything. When they probably, they are, they are saying the right thing. The Bible doesn't teach it. The Bible does not teach that we are to be vegan. Let's just be real here. The Bible doesn't teach that whatsoever. So why do many of us have that understanding? Why did I have that understanding? Well, because of what we've read from, at certain quotes we've read from Ellen White, where she speaks out a lot against eating meat but does she herself even call meat eating a sin is it a sin she doesn't even call it a sin in this following statement she says i advise every sabbath keeping canvasser to avoid meat eating not because it is regarded as sin to eat meat but because it is not healthful so note that she says that it's not a sin to eat meat. The idea that she was coming from is that it's not helpful. Why? Because the animal kingdom is not the same anymore. There's lots of changes that have taken place, which can be detrimental to our health. And I agree with this. For example, something I recently found out is milk. Like, lots of people are allergic to milk. I mean, I'm lactose intolerant, I believe. When I was younger, if I had milk, I would throw up. So a lot of us, most people are allergic to milk. However, studies have shown, you can research this yourself, studies have shown that there was like a ge genetic mutation that took place within the cows. So before cows used to produce milk via a particular protein, they call it the A2 protein, and this was easily digestible from for man, man could digest this. But some time ago, there was some genetic mutation where cows now produce A1 milk, and this A1 milk is harder to digest. However, there are still a few cows, I think they're called the Jersey cows, or some farmers that still have the A2 cows. And when people have that particular milk, they don't have an allergic reaction study this yourself, it's really interesting. Or if people have raw milk, particular raw A2 milk, it's very nourishing for them and they've healed a lot of digestive issues using raw milk, especially if they use raw A2 milk. So the milk today, which you see in the shops, is not good because it's been pasteurized. A lot of it is coming from this from cows that have had this genetic mutation because most cows have this. And this is why it's become poisonous to majority of humans, mankind. Um, there's certain types of protein in milk. One is called casein, uh, which makes up about 30% of the protein. And there's an A1 version and an A2 version. And what's, what makes these uh, different is that the different orientations or patterns or strings of amino acids, okay? Um, the A1 version is a genetic mutation. What's a mutation? It's a sudden change of alterations in the genetics. And A2 is not a genetic mutation, okay? A1, being a genetic mutation, allow something BCM-7. I'm not going to tell you the chemistry. You don't need to know that, but you just have to realize that this thing right here can invade the digestive tract, okay, and create problems, digestive bloating and inflammation. Whereas A2 does not allow BCM-7 to go in the digestive tract, okay? So that's really all you need to know. It's that simple. Jersey cows produce A2, and if you consume cheese from a goat or a sheep, you're going to get A2. So things have changed in the animal kingdom and that's why we need to be extremely careful and cautious and we need to know what we are doing. Now because of these changes in the animal kingdoms, does it mean that we all need to go vegan? Does the Bible teach such a doctrine that we must all go plant-based? And those who don't go plant-based are gonna go to hell or they are sinning? No, it doesn't. I mean, even Ellen White recognised that in cases of severe illnesses and exhaustion, it might be thought better to eat meat. And if you are going to do this, seek the healthiest animals that you can find. 
And then why herself wasn't a vegan, she also ate animal products till she died because she felt that she needed it where she couldn't obtain the right nutrition around her at that time, wherever she was, she would eat animal products. She was more balanced. But this idea that we have flying around that those who have severe health conditions who feel the need to eat meat, because they are doing this, they are going to go to hell because they're somehow not trusting the Lord in this. These are false tests. This is bondage. This is a pharisaical message. This message has no compassion. It has no love. Because there are some people who really struggle with digestive issues. And believe it or not, they turn to animal products and it relieves them and it helps them. Another testimony a woman was given was that her son, he had that, a condition, I forgot what it is. But basically he wasn't functioning right. Like he, he, people didn't think he would live a long life, you know. And then they were doing so many tests on him and they found out that his digestion, his microbiome was completely out of whack. So what she did, she put him on raw milk, raw A2 milk with kefir. She made kefir and stuff like that. And then over the months, the child started to get better and started to function. So it started to make improvements, which the doctors couldn't believe. And what was she primarily feeding him? Raw milk, kefir. And that helped heal the body. Another example, I spoke about this last week. Um, a guy had cancer, like stage three colon cancer. You can watch the video, right? He was sick. So he fasted for 24 days. After that fast, he couldn't eat much food, nothing. The only thing he could eat was meat. Like, so he would have a steak in the evening, just one meal a day, and would just fast, like, for the rest of the hours. And in four months, his cancer, his tumour was healed. You know, and he gives his testimony. And the guy's 50-something. He looks 30. He looks amazing for his age. But he follows a strict, like, one meal a day, I think, um, animal-based diet, and he does, it looks amazing, healthy, but that's what worked well for him, you know, so I want you to understand that individuals, everyone's different, you know, and God gave us these animal products in the sinful world that we're living in to help certain individuals in these cases, you know, so we should stop making these rules and laws and tests, because you're not doing the message, you're not doing the SDA faith any justice, you're just turning and putting people off as a bunch of crazy fanatics because the idea of veganism or plant-based, um, everyone having to be plant-based or be vegan, or if you're not vegan, then you're sinning or you're going to hell, is not biblical and it's just a turn-off. It's a fanatical message, especially if people, those who are eating meat look more better and more healthier than you do and are thriving better than you do. You know, and just as one may say, animal products are dangerous and not the same. It's the same thing with the plants and the soil today. A study recently showed that 80% of Americans had Roundup, the weed killer in their urine. Roundup, that's glyphosate, that's cancer, cancer form. And this is probably why so many vegans are getting sick and getting cancer. 80% of Americans had this in their urine, you know. The soils are depleted. The plants that you're eating, is a lot of it is GMO. It's everywhere. It's not just the animal kingdom. It's the soil. A lot of people can't digest wheat anymore because the wheat is not the same anymore. Unless you're getting icorn wheat, the majority of breads that you're eating, pastas, tofu, it's all GMO. A lot of it's made in the lab. Those fake vegan burgers, it's more dangerous, you know, and as I learned, as I was, when I was vegan, I used to follow so many vegan influencers, plant-based, healthy ones as well, like just to get like meal ideas and meal ideas and stuff like that. Most of them now, they're not vegan anymore. They've had similar conditions that I have, digestive issues where they can't be vegan anymore or they have to develop a tolerance to carbs. You know, so this is a serious issue. A lot of you guys even gave your testimonies and shared your experiences, you know. And many of us who may turn to animal products is not because of, oh, we just want to eat animals or because, um, I don't know, just being intemperate or whatever. It's because we are struggling with health. And that is what's helping to relieve us, you know. As I said before, I was going downhill. I was becoming seriously ill. I was desperate. 
you know eating meat was the last thing I wanted to do but I felt I had no choice everything I was reading pertaining to my condition doctors that studied it and those who achieved success were saying you have to cut out the carbs for at least three months you know and have animal products because that helps heal the lining bone broth they were saying these things and people have healed on this and I tried I believe I tried everything under the sun before I turned I made this decision as I said I did the raw for six months being raw is not an easy thing to do in London you know trying to get the right fruits the healthy fruits the right fruits you know get in the veg it's difficult it's not an easy thing to do some, someone else said do the low carb diet did the low carb diet I, I mean someone said do the high carb diet in other words cut out fats and just eat carbs I did that for almost a year you know I think that probably made it that made it worse you know so all I'm saying is is that everybody is different you know it's an individual thing someone else was saying I'm recommending meat to my subscribers I'm not recommending meat to anyone only thing I'm recommending is everyone do their best that they can for their body if you have candida if you're suffering with digestive issues and you feel eating some eggs or even a steak once in a while helps you then do that as far as i'm concerned you're not sinning if that's what's helping you clearing up your brain fog helping you function then do that you're not sinning you know but the church or many of them the church present it in the idea where these individuals feel guilty they feel like that they're sinning or like they're doing something wrong just simply because only just by trying to to help their bodies when they're not and we should stop that you know everyone's different and everyone needs to do the best that they can you know and just as meat is bad some may say the majority of meat you've got to be careful it's the same thing today with the fruit and the veg personally I don't buy fruit or veg unless it's well I don't really buy fruit anymore I can't have fruit for now the veg that I buy you know if I can't grow it because it's winter now I'll buy it in a shop I try to find the cleanest possible dementia, bio, you know, and even then you still don't know, you just got to pray over it, you know. Even the oats is sprayed, a lot of that, they find a lot of that is GMO. A lot of it is contaminated. You do the best that you can. I'm finding that those who do succeed, many of those who do succeed on a highly raw plant-based diet, they're growing their own food. There's a lady called Anne Osborne, she's a fruitarian. I've followed her journey, very interesting. And she just lives on fruits and she's doing quite well. But when I look at her lifestyle, she's in Australia and she grows most of her fruit and veg. The same with another popular raw foodist, Fully Raw Christina, you might know her. She's in Hawaii, she grows all her own fruits and veg. And even before she moved to Hawaii, when she was in Texas, she had her own co-op. So all her food was local, she knew what she was eating. But many of us today don't know what we're eating. We're just buying it from Sainsbury's, Walmart, whatever shop that we see. You know, not realising that there's so much um, chemicals and weed killers within those plant-based products that's also killing you slowly. And if you're not aware of that, you're going to get cancer. You're going to get these diseases. That's why a lot of vegans are getting sick. They are getting cancer and stuff like that. So I think the solution is, regarding this, that people need to be educated rather than this whole idea of just vegan and plant-based. That's not really a healthy diet. We should be educating people more to know how to source their own food, to be more local, teach people to grow their own food. That's the best solution. If I had the choice between a vegan Beyond Burger and a beef burger, which is beef grown on my land, where I'm living, like within my vicinity, I'm gonna take the steak, I'm gonna take the beef burger over the Beyond Burger. You know, as I've learned about health, I'm learning it's more local antibiotic free grass fed you know and if you do that then you can also thrive perfectly well there are also people who eat meat they do but they they, they know their bodies they're so disciplined they're temperate even if they're eating meat and they're 80 90 years old and they're thriving they look great you know i look at my dad he's in his mid 70s right he's still working 12 hour shifts the stuff he does, I can't even do myself, you know. And he's like an old man, you know. I mean, he's he's fine. Why? Because I believe that's 
what he grew up on, you know, he grew up in Nigeria, everything was fresh, everything was natural, you know, they had the sun, they exercised, they walked for miles, so he's built this strong constitution which enables him to function the way he does, and I remember before I used to say, oh, go vegan, you need to stop eating meat, I'm, I look back and I think, oh, I was so wrong to do that, you know, I mean, he's doing better than me, you know, in terms of his health, you know, and even my brother as well, like, he may not be vegan, but he looks after his health in other ways. He looks better than me as well, and he's older than me. He's very health conscious, but he still includes animal products. And here I am saying, hey, go vegan, but then I'm struggling, suffering. It makes no sense. This is, this is what you call mind conditioning, you know, telling someone to do something that's not even working for you very well. You know, so all of these things, I had to pray, I had to rethink, you know, and, you know, I'm glad I made this choice. The, the only thing I regret is that I didn't do this earlier, you know, because I'm seeing the benefits, you know. Um, I'm starting to expel the yeast. That's never happened before because I just, I had to cut out the carbs. That's what I had to do. Someone told me this before, but back then I was so vegan minded. I was like, no, 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 there's got to be a way until I started to really decline, you know. So um, it's been a tough journey for me, believe it or not, but I believe I needed the experience to humble me, you know, because I also had that crazy fanatical mindset. Oh, we have to go plant-based. We have to go vegan. That's the way, you know, spirit of prophecy and blah, blah, blah. No, that's the wrong mindset. And furthermore, Mrs. White tells us that we are to prove all our positions from the Bible and that the final generation will have the Bible as their only point of doctrine, not her writings, the Bible. And read the Bible cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation, you would not find one commandment where God tells us to stop eating meat after he gave us the, after he gave us that command. We have to be careful, but with eating meat, which I agree with, but I think in this day and age, it's the same thing with plants and vegetables. We've got to be careful. Um, I also want to read this comment, which really, touched my heart because I could relate to every point this person made and it really makes you think so I just want to share this to make sure you all just understand that this is a serious thing that people go through but this is what he wrote he said sorry to hear that you're going through this thank god for you I was plant-based for years especially after hearing the health message in our church SDA we preach you will go to hell for eating meat crazy that's nuts now that's so wrong preaching people will go to hell for eating meat nuts that's crazy but he continues but i'm having the same issues as you are my family also has nearly the same issues and i know other adventists with these issues as well when i eat carbs and fruit i feel like i am going to die I was not using sugar or drinking sodas or fruit juices. So how could I feel this bad? I started to eat eggs and little fish, but I only felt better when I don't eat carbs. I get, I got so sick, I couldn't work. I went to the doctors, I had sugar in my urine. Imagine that, he got so sick he couldn't work. You know what saved me? I was almost in that condition. What saved me was detoxing. Because I would always, I'm sure if you noticed, I would always have to go on long fast, five days, um, do like a colon cleanse or stuff like that. After I did that, then I'll feel better. But then it will always come back, you know. And that's why the doctors say, those who specialise in candida and understand this carbohydrate issues, they say that you've got to give it up. You've got to kill the yeast, you know. And not only with diet, you need to use antiviral. I'll do a whole presentation, maybe the next time, just going through this. I've learned a lot. So I know some people suffer from this issue, so I'll just share how I'm dealing with this. But if you have a chronic candida issue, it's very difficult to deal with. Some people say, just eat olives, just eat almonds. I wish it was that easy, guys. I've tried all of that. It doesn't work like that. For me, it didn't work like that. You've got to cut out a lot of the fruit, sugar, the carbs, even the healthy carbs for a period of time. And you've got to start targeting the yeast because this yeast, your colon or your tube is like 20 foot long. Like it's ridiculously long and they build pockets, you know, they start to build this biofilm and it's very clever. They hide themselves within mucus. They don't want to die. So to try and kill this yeast, it's, it's difficult. 
you've got to really know what you're doing you've got to be diligent and you've got to cut out the sugar else they'll just grow back and come back again but he says i got so sick i couldn't work i went to the doctor i had sugar in my urine i saw a video about candida i came i saw a video about candida i came upon the video to get rid of it I needed to eat meat and veg and stop the carbs. That's what I was finding as well. I was researching it. I consider all the people who are eating meat and not so strict on diet. They look and feel better than I am. And I ask myself, if I'm doing the right thing, why am I sick? I feel bad because I tell people this is how God wants us to eat. But yet I look worse than them and they are healthy and I am not. Not to mention I cannot afford the diet that we as Adventists are supposed to have. And that's another thing, because I was thinking the same thing as I was, as I was battling this. I was like, I am telling people to go vegan, plant-based, but this is not working for me, Lord. Like, this is not making sense. Like, I was really battling with the Lord regarding this. And it's only when I prayed so hard, like, I never prayed like that before, God gave me my answer. He explained what my condition was. And then I felt comfortable eating, doing the meat after that, you know, because, you know, it, it was a battle. It was just a real fight I was having internally regarding this issue. But anyway, he continues. Um, it has been on my mind quite a while to eat meat and veg, to heal my body. And today I said I'll put butter in my diet. I prayed to God to show me how to fix my video. Then came this video. My sister is in a worse position than I. My nephew is anemic at 12. My brother-in-law recently died of similar issues. I feel we have become like the Pharisees thinking we can work our way to heaven and saying who will make it and who won't. And in the long run, we are missing the point and turning away people from God. If only we would not idolise Sister White, putting her as the mediator between God and man, and give Christ the glory, we would not go wrong. I completely agree with that. That's what the issue is. People are making a doctrine, are making laws out of Ellen White's counsels. They are counsels, they are not laws. But we are turning it into a law and using it to say who can go to heaven and who's not going to go to heaven. This is pharisaical it's almost satanic brainwashing. It's not Christian. Where's the compassion? Where is the love? It's a horrible doctrine. And in the meanwhile, I'm thinking of the other SDAs who are, who are embarrassed, suffering with this issue, you know, and don't know who to turn to because no one can help them. As I said, I didn't just start eating meat just like that. I went to many SDA health professionals. No one can help me. No one took me seriously. No one understood what I was going through. They were still feeding me carbs. They probably didn't know. They were still feeding me carbs. Oh, you know, it's got to be a plant-based diet. That's it. You know, the health message is changing. We need to be more intelligent regarding these things. I advocate local sources, knowing where your food, where you, where, knowing where your food is coming from. Not just the animals, if you're going to eat animals, but also the vegetables that you're eating and the plants. I would not buy a salad from Hulf, from um, Walmart or Tesco's, just a salad that's just been there for days, that's been sprayed with all these weed killers or, or God knows what. Even if you wash it, it can still be within that plant. No, we need to be more educated to the health reform. If only we would stop idolising Sister White and putting her as the mediator between God and man and giving Christ to glory would not go wrong. When I put fish in my diet, I was persecuted for not following the health message. Thank you, Grace. Love you. God will heal you because he loves you and the work you are doing for your brothers and sisters. And that, for me, that just made, that just, oh, I can't describe how much that that comment meant to me, you know, because when you're dealing with hate and people telling you these things, but yet, in the midst of all of those voices, someone is saying that, you know, you are helping them spiritually. You know, you're helping them to, to get better. Or you're easing, you know, that, that guilt, that unnecessary guilt that's been placed upon them, you know. So, um, as I said, like, the only thing I advocate, the only thing I want, I just want people to do the best that they can for their health. 
whatever makes them feel better. Now, if it's being vegan, plant-based, that's working for you, great, fantastic, stick to it. But if it's for someone else where they feel they need to eat animal products and they're doing it in a balanced, temperate way, don't judge them. That's between them and God. You have no right to say that person's not going to heaven or that person is sinning or that person is going to hell. That's between them and God, you know. The Bible tells us, if any man think if he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing as he ought to know. And as I'm going in Christ, that's what God is teaching me. Things that I thought were so set in stone, I'm realizing, hold on, things, things, are, things are not like that, actually. I mean, there's a lot more to this truth. You know, we need to be balanced individuals. We need to be more loving. We need to be more caring. If there are things that we don't understand or if someone's doing something we don't agree with or we just don't understand at that time, rather than attacking that person, pray. You know, ask God for wisdom how you deal with the situation. Because not everything is black and white. You know, so that's all I want to say in this video. Um, in the next video, I'm going to try and share my detox or things for those who are suffering with candida and stuff like that and blood sugar issues. I want to show what I'm doing. It's still quite early, but um, I'll just show you what I'm doing because it might help, especially, yeah, because I think it's quite important. So in the next video, I'll talk about that. Um, for those who are like, waking up at three in the morning or struggling with insomnia the thing i recommend you do first is try and do a colon or a liver cleanse you don't have to eat meat i'm not saying you should eat meat i'm just saying try to do a cleanse if it's fasting um or a liver cleanse because that can relieve it could just be you have a toxic liver so you might want to relieve that for a while fasting is very good if you can fast for a while um, I recommend now just cut out the bread. Don't just buy normal bread from the stores, you know. Um, because a lot of the wheat, especially if it's wheat, like avoid that. That causes a lot of issues. I know so many Adventists now who have cancer now, getting diabetes. And they're, they're vegan, you know. Some of them look terrible. They probably could do with eating a few eggs, you know, but they wouldn't. But, you know, that's just my opinion. They look awful. But they have this ideology in their minds which is not even biblical, you know? And then they attack you because you want to, like, do something to better your health. It's just so wrong. But in the next video, I'll talk about detoxing tips and herbs that you can use to kill candida, yeast, and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, God willing, you'll see or hear from me in the next video. Take care and...